Hello, my beautiful beings. Let me see if I can find out how to put a filter on. Does anyone know how to do a filter? It's so frustrating to me. Like, Instagram has really awesome filters. And I just did a live stream on my Instagram page, which has thousands of more uh, my uh, followers or community uh, than my Facebook. So I have no idea if anyone will join on my Facebook. But I just wanted a video that I could actually keep because it takes me a really long time to put makeup on and get pretty for you guys. So um, I had to redo this video and there's no filters. Do you know if there's filters on Facebook or do you not, you don't I'm even not care? Sure. You're, he's a guy, he doesn't care. Um, well, I guess I just have to not be as cute as I am on Instagram. Cause I, I, I click on the little, um, it's like the star with, um, with the wand, like a wand star. Oh, forget it. Okay. That's as good as it's gonna get, I guess, you guys. So what I am talking about today is um, a male and female perspective of the same story, but yet how different it can be um, with a female versus a male. Um, my partner, Terrell, will join as soon as he re rebuilds his testosterone, <laughs> whatever that may be. I am allowing him the space to <clears throat> to do that and he'll join in whenever he wants to um, and I will tell you the story just to tell you the story from a logical perspective of what happened last night and then I'm gonna go into the female perspective and the male perspective and you guys can see how different it can be but both men and women can learn from this story. Oh, I have two people on. How do I see who you are? I, uh, I don't know why I can't see. Maybe you have to comment, I don't know. Oh, let's see. I'm not really, I'm really sorry you guys. I'm terrible at Facebook Live. I'm, um, your viewers. I have not figured out Facebook Live. So I can't see who you are, I'm sorry. But thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is my second attempt at this live stream tonight. My first was on Instagram and we had an amazing interaction from everybody. Um, and I'm grateful for everybody that um, joins me. Thank you so much. Um, so my partner and I went to a party last night and it was an uh, influencer party. So people were very, uh, extroverted um you know wanting a lot of attention i guess that's a good way to put it um i'm not saying all influencers are like our influencers are like that because i can be considered a micro influencer i have almost seventy thousand followers on instagram on my personal page <coughs> and um i get paid as an influencer for for things and um i guess and I'm considered that, but um, a lot of these young influencers, that they look like, um, I think the owner of the home, she told me they were like 22, a lot of 22 two year olds at this party. So they just wanted to get a lot of attention. So there was a lot of um, provocative clothing being worn and there was twerking and there was, you know, kind of like crazy dancing and just attention grabbing. There was like a film crew there. So I think people were really trying to get attention. And um, there was a girl I noticed um, very clearly that was wearing extremely pro provocative dress. This dress was barely covering, covering her vagina and it was hardly covering her ass. Was her ass pretty much hanging out? It was a little cheeky. It was cheeky, Terrell said. Um, so her ass was hanging out and um, her vagina was pretty close to hanging out. I mean, if you were at a low enough uh, level, you could probably see the, the kitty cat. And um, then I, I noticed that she was doing um, some extremely provocative dancing 
uh, above and beyond just twerking. She was like touching herself and like grabbing her vagina and like thrusting. And that's cool. That's cool. I, I've been through a phase in my life where I wore extremely provocative clothing myself. Um, hi, Dan. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, now it's telling me who's on here. I don't know why it wasn't telling me before. Uh, I can't see comments though. So if you can comment, that would really help a lot. And tell me if you can hear me okay. Um, so I don't know if I can't see comments or if you guys just aren't commenting. I don't know. But her dress was um, barely covering her vagina and her ass was hanging out. And she was dancing, like, touching herself and, you know, like, like thrusting the air and grabbing her vagina. So that's cool. Like I said, I explained that I, I've been through a phase when I was really young, uh, in my early 20s, um, where I was, um, I guess, getting comfortable in my own skin. And I was um, stepping into my feminine goddess, and I was, um, um, I guess, getting over my Christian shame. So I grew up Christian, and uh, Christianity somehow uh, shames women for being sexual. And, um, you know, I, I just went through a phase where I decided that I didn't give a fuck. I was going to wear whatever I wanted to wear, whatever, if it was short, if it showed skin, whatever, I'm going to wear it. So I was dancing provocatively as well in my early twenties and like really like I would like get on the floor and like hump it, you know, but I was only doing that for myself. I was not trying to seek attention. I was not trying to fuck random men and I didn't fuck random men. I did not have one night stands. I was just doing it for me, right? So because I went through that phase of dressing extremely provocatively and um, dancing extremely provocatively when I was in my early 20s, I was like, you know, she's doing that like you know I didn't judge her for dressing as the slutty and I was not judging her for dancing slutty um, but I am a dating coach and if she was my client I would tell her that you're giving some nonverbal communication to the people in the room especially men because men are extremely visual and men are interpreting this as you're communicating to them something right so if she was my client if she was not my client she does not pay me for my advice so I didn't say anything to her I just let her be her free spirited self so um, my partner saw us, uh, my partner's very, very respectful, and he at one point saw some girls twerking, like, I saw them, I saw the girls twerking, I was laughing, because to me it was like, I'm trying to get attention, I thought it was just funny, because it's an influencer party, and it was just funny to me, and he wanted to see what I was laughing about, so he looked over to the girls twerking, and he immediately, like, looks away, like, he's trying to be so respectful, and not, like, stare, and and trying to be respectful, I think, towards me as well. I thought that was really sweet. So, um, it, it's just one of those parties. Like, I had a gin and tonic, um, and I, I just had one, but I think I was, um, like three quarters of the way done with it. I started feeling super tipsy. They made it so strong, and the alcohol was free, and so she was getting drunker and drunker as the night went on and the men were getting drunker and drunker as the night went on and pretty much when everybody was drunk um me and Terrell were heading out to leave and I wanted to tell the owner of the home good night so I came up to her and I was like thank you so much for inviting me and um she has a supplement company so she wanted to give me some supplements as well as Terrell so we go into her closet and um, we're getting the supplements from her. And then the girl that was wearing the really 
provocative clothes and dancing extremely provocatively came up to the owner of the home and we were just standing there so we just had to hear this because we we're standing next to her but she said oh he just never mind you never mind I don't want to start drama and we're like what I mean you already kind of opened a can of worms just by saying that so like what what is it and she's like oh never mind never mind it's just like he's just so disrespectful right, yes. he's just so, this is Terrell everybody this is my up. partner so t- so I'm getting to the part I'm just telling the story first and yeah, then we're ahead. and then we're gonna do the perspectives next go so ahead, go ahead. I don't know who's on here. It only tells me one person that it says three here, and I can't see anyone's comments. I told them to comment, and I can't see them. And oh, when man. I did it, when I did a live on Facebook on my Crypto Goddess page, mm-hmm. I saw comments after I ended it. So I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong here. Nothing. Yeah, this is how Facebook is set up. So you can't yeah. see any comments until you're done. You can see comments. You can't see. Well, who's where? On there. No, the comments. Are people commenting? Well, I don't know. I told them to comment so I could see them, but I yeah, I tapped on all those things. I don't see it. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't know either. Yeah, them are the comments. Nobody has commented yet, though. Yeah, it's not as. Can you guys comment, IG. please, so I can see it? But last time, the same thing. Like, I couldn't. Yeah. Then I, I ended it and I saw a bunch of comments. Yeah, comment. I don't know. We'll all figure out after this. Oh, Facebook Lives. Um, anyway, so um, she's like, well, he was so disrespectful. He's so disrespectful. He's like, you want to fuck? We were straight, like, we wait, was wait, considered. Hold on. Oh, I'm just telling the story. I'm just <laughs> telling the story. I and was there too, so I was listening yeah. to all this that she's telling you. Yeah, it's, and then we're going to do the female perspective and then the male perspective. Right now we're just doing like the story of actually what happened. Got it. Like the logical perspective of what happened based on what we saw, what we witnessed. Got it. So she's like, oh, I don't want to cause drama, I don't want to cause drama. And she, she tried to walk by a little bit too. Yeah, she's trying to act <laughs> she's cool. She's kind of act like she didn't want to like, say it. She didn't want to say it, but she did want to say it. She walked by the owner and said that. I know. I told I told I told them that we're standing next to the owner of the house getting supplements. Right. And she walks up like, oh, I don't want to start. I'm not gonna say anything. I don't want to say anything. Like, wait, hold up. I, this is my house. Yeah. So the owner of the home, she's like, but this is my home. If something's going on, I'd really like to know about it. And she's like, he's so disrespectful. Like who? <laughs> wait, you know, I don't know if I want to say anything. Like no, who? But the owner of the home is like, you know, this is my home. I really need to know what's going on. So she's like, oh, I don't know, like. He's so mean. He, he's so disrespectful. He said, he said he wants to fuck. And so we're like, <laughs> like, do you remember what he looks like? Like, like okay. yeah, but I don't want to start drama. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're kind of like, like I mean, I think our initial reaction. Yeah, that was disrespectful. Hi, Joseph. Yeah, it's just no comments. Hi, jo- hey, Joseph. We'll comment if you can, so we can see your comments. I don't know why we're not. We can't see anyone's comments, but um. So she's like, he just said he wants to fuck. And so, of course, I think our initial reaction was like, okay, yeah. well, that, I mean, it yeah. looked like this what she wanted from a, from a man's perspective, but it yeah, is disrespectful so. for him to say that. So, Amanda wanted to know, who said that? This is my home. They need to know that's not okay to be treating my friends like nah, that. I don't want to start no drama. I don't want to say anything. And we're like, <laughs> like wait. okay. And then, but then she kept saying, but it was so rude of him, and I'm so offended, and blah, blah, blah. and so we're like, okay, do you want us to do something? Yeah. Like, do you not want us? Like, well, okay. So Terrell was like, okay, show me where he is, and and the owner of the home said, show me where he is, and she's like, kind of acting hesitant, but very insistent that he is an asshole, right? Yeah. So, so we walk to the other room, and she points to a guy sitting on the couch. couch. Yeah. And she's like, Kim, I really just don't want to start anything. And then the owner of the home was like, hey, I'll talk to him. I know him. I'll talk to him and let him know we're not doing this in my home. And um, so she immediately went and told her fiancé. Her fiancé spoke to him. Mm -hmm. The girl's still standing next to me and Terrell. And she goes on to tell us. The truth comes out. We'll set you free. (laughs) (laughs) But she said, yeah, it's just so rude like i can't believe he just came out and just said i want to fuck and we're like yeah man like that's crazy and you know, she's like yeah and I'm, i was kissing him making and, out with him and, and I, you know we were making out we and was then like what me and twirl were both like <laughs> we, was, we was on our way out the door at this point we we're grabbing some things supplements and some things and um we we're on the way out the door so when she said that we was just like all right it's time to go like he tripping 
Plus, the outf- you told about the outfit and everything. I did, yes. I, I explained the very logical story, and we're yeah. about to get to our perspectives next, but first I'm explaining the logical story. I'm getting story. ahead of it. I'm just like, so <laughs> I'm still appalled by this whole thing. So, <laughs> logically, Terrell and I obviously, like, tapped out at that moment. We're like, wow. you kissed him. I mean, the story changed. Dramatically. So, I, I think that you're communicating something with this man that he didn't understand there's alcohol flowing you're obviously drunk he's obviously drunk so things are going to get misinterpreted um so you know what Ugh, we're not going to go talk to him um yeah at that point i was like i'm not yeah nervous. we're not really going to take your side 100 percent. although yeah. the man should not have said I, I disagree. In the with way that. he said it, he should have he, he should have probably asked her questions instead, which we'll get to when we talk about yeah. the female perspective versus the male perspective. Yeah, and I'm gonna explain that a little bit once we do. On my on my perspective of being a man and knowing guys and some of the friends I used to associate with and how people think and move. So. Okay, so do we want to start with the male perspective or the female perspective? We don't see any comments, so we don't know what you guys think. Uh, so far, so I don't know if they want to hear the male perspective first or the female. So should we do rock, paper, scissors? I'll start it off. So pretty okay. much like <clears throat> the whole scenario, you have a guy, like the way guys think, you guys have been watching Chelsea's videos, more of a physical rim of things. So first of all, they kissed. This guy feels like he has a chance. And the woman's wearing a slutty outfit. Which we call what? A uh, Slut uniform. <laughs> yes, that's what men consider it, women. It's a, a slut, slut uniform. uniform. Explain that analogy that you said. If you were to go to the post office and you see somebody with the U.S. Postal logo on their shirt, you're going to go up to them and like, hey, can you help me send this mail off? I need some stamps. Can you help me out? And they look at you and be like, I don't work here. <laughs> that would throw you off, right? Yeah, because they're wearing a, a postal service uniform. Or if you went up to an officer, you run through the alley. Somebody's chasing you. Just stole your purse. Officer, please, please help me, officer. And he looks back at you. I'm not a police officer, but you're wearing a police officer uniform. She's like, I'm. I'm not trying to fuck. I'm not. A, I'm not like that. But, but you're wearing a whore, a whore uniform. A whore uniform. Okay. So it's very disrespectful. But we'll say slut. A uniform. slut uniform. Hi, Bobby. Thanks for joining. Um, so she was giving the wrong signals by kissing and also by the clothes that she was wearing and it just throws guys off, especially when that is their primary way of showing love and affection. So men's um, love language, um, more typically physical touch is the top two. It's either number one or number two, typically a lot more often than with women. With women, typically it's one of the last love languages. So, in his mind, he's giving her a compliment. I want to fuck. Right? Like, yeah. I want to go farther. We've already engaged in the kiss, making out of this party. We're feeling each other. The energy's flowing. We're both a little bit intoxicated. That's interesting. So, man thinks that she's interested yes. if she kisses you. You heard two chains. It's a vibe. He feels it's a vibe going on. She might be thinking something totally different. You know, he's might have... He's might have this is just the male perspective now, so it's okay. Yeah, we'll, he, we'll focus on he's might have scored before on that because usually that, that sign is like, okay, oh, a man feels like you're feeling them and they, they're going to take a little bit farther. They're going to kiss, maybe they start touching, then they start touching other areas, and they're going to see how far they can go with it. He just went out and said, I want to fuck. Yeah. So she felt some type of way. He was a little confused because when the owner of the home spoke to the man that did it, he had no recollection of what was what the problem was. <laughs> he was just like... Huh? Well, I, he didn't know what was going on. He was drunk. He like, was drunk they were both with... very drunk. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Flooring words drunk, so... Yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. So the male... Side. So, the, so the male... I'm going to summarize. The male perspective is... She's sending a signal, a nonverbal communication with what she's wearing in a male's mind. Okay, you need to remember that yeah, men and women yeah. men and women think very differently. So this is the men's perspective, and that's okay. There's no judgment for what she was doing, and there's no Not judgment. At all. There's no judgment How, for what he was doing. I'm gonna say something else after oh, that. Go ahead. However, and this is me hanging out with guys, you know, back in college or at at the club, and the way guys think 
and talk to each other when they see somebody in an officer uniform or a what we call a slut, slut, uni- slut, slut uniform, uniform, they think you're a police officer. Yeah. They think you are, are that way that you're dressed. So they're talking to their friends like, oh, man, I want to hit that. Yeah. Or, hey, go talk to her, man. Go. They're encouraging her. Go. Go say something, man. And then you say something, and then, like, you make an eye with them. And friends is like, oh, he about to get some. <laughs> but she probably not thinking the same thing. <laughs> That's how men think. And we have to appreciate that, right? Because yeah. men and women are built completely different. Yeah, true. The main difference between us is that men have 30% more testosterone. And then that creates different um, brain patterns as well. So men can focus better, and they're more logical, usually. Of course, women and men can do the same things in life. However... We've been programmed a certain way as men and programmed a certain way as women. And then the hormones make huge changes. So in a man's mind, they're, they're, very, they're a lot more primal when it comes to um, sex and when it comes to courting and when it comes to, um, what would you call like a, the before, like foreplay, foreplay and stuff like that. They're, it's just completely different than it is for, for women. I definitely. So... For a man, nonverbal cues are vital because if they yes. if they pick up on nonverbal cues, um, then they'll get rewarded yeah. usually. And if they don't pick up on the nonverbal cues, then a woman will be like, "What's wrong with you? you don't even notice me. What's going on?" True. You know. So yeah. men have become very good at picking up the nonverbal things, and they they they're like hunters, right? They're really good at hunting because they can focus, you know. So a really good hunter, let's say you're hunting deer, is gonna know like when to shoot the deer, yeah. um, what kind of deer to shoot, where to find the deer, and this is kind of a similar thing for men. If they're just in the mood to get laid, they're going to be at a certain place talking to certain women that look a certain way because. <coughs> It's less, they're less likely to get rejected. So they're looking at, statistically speaking, I've talked to a hundred women so far in my life and most of them I scored with, if I just want to have sex, have all been wearing something very slutty True. and have been dancing very slutty. Statistically speaking, it's a she's, good she's gonna Don't fuck talk to her, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're just looking at that. Yeah. Women are much different. We have many more layers and we don't just look at a man and think, Oh, he's a man whore. You know, I know I could get laid. Some might. Um, yeah, most women, course. most women don't, especially evolved women. So we need a lot more to have sex than than men do. We need a lot of mental stimulation, et cetera, et cetera. However, there's a lot of women that just really go out to get laid, and th- they make it known. Um, and they do communicate with non-verbally with what they are wearing and how they're acting and what they're doing. And so men um, have a hard time distinguishing between yeah. women that are really trying to get some versus women that are just trying to do something for themselves. Are you an officer really or is it Halloween? So are you just like pretending know. or are you just like, you know. So here's the female perspective. And I'm, I'm not going to um, make her look like. You know, she didn't do anything no, just, wrong. Yeah, like, there's fair. no such thing as like right or wrong. But um, it's just a female perspective so that both people can learn from this. Both men can learn from this and females can learn from this. So the male perspective or a female perspective is that she might have been going through a phase in her life similar to the phase I went through in my early 20s when I really wanted to just wear slutty outfits for me. Because it was a sense of freedom. It was a sense of fuck you to the church I grew up in. And fuck you to a controlling father. And fuck you to a controlling school environment that made me wear skirts that went down to my knees or lower. So I'm in college. I can wear whatever the fuck I want. No repercussions. And I'm evolving. And I'm getting comfortable in my skin. And I feel like a... A sexual goddess for the first time in my life and it feels so good it feels so freeing and I'm gonna wear the fuck I want and I'm gonna dance however the fuck I want and I did I danced however the fuck I want at one point I literally I have videos I was just seeing the videos of my old computer as I was pulling up things from my really old computer recently it just got to work again and there's some videos of me like literally humping the floor <laughs> a really short skirt and like this bra top thing and I don't think there's too many people around, if any. I think there was like a DJ 
which was my friend and then some girlfriends of mine and then like one random guy in the corner like what the fuck is going on but it wasn't a huge crowd but it was just my way of just like feeling like a sexy goddess and just mm, I am powerful and I am beautiful and I can I can just celebrate my sexuality and just do whatever the fuck I want and fuck you to to you know hide the nipples you know, free the nipples, fuck it, you know, like, I, I just was going through that phase, and I wasn't trying to fuck random men, I didn't have one night stands, if a guy would have come up to me and said, do you want to fuck, I would have been offended, because I wasn't doing that for him, I wasn't doing it for any man, I was doing it for me, right, so, men have to take that into consideration, and I understand that you guys have to do what you have to do as hunters, I get it, I get it, but you have to consider the other perspective. That's all I'm saying. And I, I would probably be a little bit uh, more delicate with how you approach her instead of just, I want to fuck. I, I would be just a little more delicate just in case because you never know. And we were just talking about this in Instagram live. Like what if, what if they did sleep with each other? And then, and she's completely wasted and wakes up the next day and like, oh my God, fuck you. I didn't consent to that. And it became like a whole thing. Like it could be kind of dangerous, right? right? So I, if I were a guy, I would ask more questions. Like what kind of girl she is, what she's looking for in a man. What does she want? If a girl really just wants to fuck right now, tonight, she would say, you know what? I'm just looking for some D. Like most of the time, would they say that? I don't know. You're a man. You would know more than I would. <laughs> are they pretty upfront about if they're a, if they're just trying to get laid tonight? Are they pretty upfront about that most of the time? Yeah, women are, and um, yeah, they they are. But I was thinking like, okay, now I'm just being a devil's advocate for the men. Men should be considerate of the woman, you know, because that might be the situation, or most majority of the time is going to be the situation they're going through. However. <laughs> At what point would the woman be considered of the men and their primal instinct to where they feel like that is the next step? Well, that's what I'm trying to communicate here, that there's always two perspectives and men and women are very different from each other. So my intent here is to educate and remind you that... That poor guy didn't know. He didn't even think he did anything. There's two perspectives, (laughs) right? Men think completely different than women. And we forget that. We forget that women and men think completely different from each other. I, I didn't do any education on how men thought when I was going through that phase. And I'm going to say something, sorry to cut you off, like if, I, if that situation were to happen, like me and the boys back in college, and like we were going home in the car driving back, we'd have just been like, what just happened? Like, bro, she was feeling you, like, did you say, like, what'd you do? He's like, I don't know, I didn't say nothing, I didn't do nothing. He just, we just would have went home, like, we call that, like, chalk an L on it like it's just a loss for the night <laughs> but it's like he, they guys just don't understand like what's really truly going on and they understand the other side and the, the female's perspective so that's why you have to ask more questions yeah. you know you have to say what kind of woman are you and, and honestly you're going to score with more women if you do this anyway so it's a win win for everybody I think it's a win 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 because at that point like when you know like what you're looking for you wouldn't be talking to that girl in the first place. Well, but if you're in college and you really are just trying to get laid, then maybe you are talking to that girl. It depends on what you want. And then that's that's interesting because now it's like, okay, you shoot your shot, it doesn't work, almost like move on to the next one. But guys, like at that point, guys don't really care. Honestly. <laughs> so this is why it's fascinating to hear yeah. both perspectives because then guys wouldn't know. care at that point. I've had, I, you know, not to put any friends out there. I've had old friends that move like that and kissing, moving, going around. They're looking to bring somebody home for the night. That's their primary goal is to go out and see who I'm going to bring home tonight. And the female perspective could be, oh, I want to kiss him because I want to see if I should go on a date with him. I want to see if we have good chemistry. I wanna, yeah. You know? So a woman's kissing intention is different than a man's kissing intention. Because if a man's kissing intention is, I want to move to the next level. Yeah. And a female's is like, I want to see if I like him at all. Another good point is say they would have, if she would have gave in and slept with him that night. 
she might have got a connection from that of like, whoa, okay, we got a connection here. I'm starting to feel this guy a little bit. And he might have just been like, I was just trying to fuck for the night. I'm not looking for a partner. So then you get into a whole other realm of things, which is a whole other conversation. <laughs> See, that's, that's why a whole it's other just so much better to Save just ask more beginning. questions. You know, like, what are you looking for in a man? And, um, what are you doing? My bad. <laughs> what are you looking for in a man? Right. Well, well, I'm looking for a husband. Then she's not the one to say, hey, do you want to fuck? Or if she says, I'm looking for a relationship type or whatever, then there's your answer. It's so simple to just ask something like that. Or, um, you know, are you feeling me? Want to drink sometime? You know, something like that. It just shows that you're being considerate enough to at least ask her on a drink date. So. True. That's just, it's just you know something to think about because you can easily offend a woman even if you think it's a sure thing so men just be a little more delicate (laughs) and women just remember how men think and if we can both come together and just try to consider each other in these interactions I think that we would have a lot more empathy for the opposite sex I think education about um, the other gender has been a key factor for um, any successful relationship and ours as well. Um, It can be forgotten though quite often, Um, you know, uh, but you know, having some education about the opposite sex and how we work is vital. It is so vital. And actually, one of the main reasons that the divorce rate is so high is just a simple yeah. misunderstanding of the opposite sex. Like, you would really think that person is off the wall with some things because you think they can't, you can't, they can't see how you see things and you haven't asked the questions to understand their side of things. Right. And so, the, moral, the key is ask questions. The moral of the story is like, ask questions and know your intentions. If your intentions is to fuck, then cool, be straightforward and communicate that with the person that you're speaking with and see where they're at with things and have a respectable way of either connecting in that way or you know being dividing and doing your own two things but if it's what you want to be in a relationship do the same thing hey you want to be in a relationship i'm looking to move things forward let's go on a date let's get to know each other let's go out yeah to asking people on a date is is um you're gonna do better with the ladies first of all and second of all it's more respectful right. so you're you're gonna have better luck if that's what you're trying to get if you're trying to get luck you're gonna have more of it so it just makes sense to ask it's tough for women these days i'll be honest with you especially la women i'm just throwing it out there yeah (laughs) just on the fact of how men are and how men are trained throughout like (sighs) of these experiences that they have like this like it's tough for women because guys that aren't evolved they do have you know multiple women that they can talk to at a time so you come across a woman who is involved and you're trying to get involved with her and she doesn't want to do it guys just move on to the next one which is good for women if you take it in the right way it just shows you he's not worth my time move forward what women get caught up at is when they start you going back to the same bs that they've been going through and the guy's still treating you the same way and he's not moving forward on pursuing you that's where women get in trouble that i see yeah because men are gonna gonna keep doing the same thing you know when you find that if a guy that's evolved that's when you start, you know, seeing the differences on how they, they pursue you. I completely agree. And we can talk about that next time. Next time. Yeah, next. we'll do male, female perspective next time. And comment any questions you have and any other female versus male perspective videos you want us to do. Might be a little New Year's series that we do. Yeah, you're I right. Like that. I, like, I that. like that too. Something different, I mean. You know, because like we forget. We, we completely forget just how different men and women think like i when i saw her wearing the slutty dress i thought she does not respect herself what he thought is she's trying to get laid two completely different perspectives true on the same we were sitting on the couch and you said and you you talk about like the hunt it was like we seen people dancing but we like saw through them and like seen her by the window on by by the patio and that's all we seen it was like babe like yeah, she's trying to get her something tonight. You're like, well, you were thinking something different. That's what he thought. Because that's the man's perspective, <laughs> she's right? That's to get what her he something. thinks. She's trying to get fucked. And I thought she's trying to get attention. True. She, or, she or 
sure she's going through some sort of like you know you should have sexual that awakening. When he was talking to her that have been like that have woke her up a little bit what i should have said what what are you going like you know what she's going through kind of hint towards something or oh i was so tipsy I, th- I had gin and tonic and it was like a triple shot gin like she made it so strong like no way i was not in a coaching mindset i was sure. just like oh what's going on <laughs> he said he wanted to fuck he what? said he wanted to fuck <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> yeah and then and then you kissed him oh uh, oh it's time to go okay all right well yeah. we need to go <laughs> so um we'll do more videos on male versus female perspective your teeth do look good. Good job, babe. But we just wanted to talk about that story that happened last night. So that, yeah. You know, it was fresh on our mind, and we wanted to tell you guys. And just remind everybody that communication is key in relationships, yes. and even in dating, and even in, like... Marriage. Sex. <laughs> sex everything. Sex. Work. Everything. Yeah. Um, work, happy yeah. New Year. I'm wearing all ice on me jewelry. Nice. Don't forget that it is an amazing gift for women if you get jewelry and this is um not uh gonna blow your budget out this is definitely not, yeah. very cost effective this is like a scorpio symbol really cute things um so definitely check it out happy new year and comment below what you want to see Let the female versus male perspective in 2020 we are your guides on that i'm no expert but through you're chart. a man so you I'm have a man yes yeah, so i'll just give a male, male perspective but, but like i'm no freaking expert at, at this no one well you won over a love mentor I was just that. <laughs> you, you won over a dating coach so you have to know something, yeah. something, something. Well, hey look at this you guys he did this himself he doesn't need a barber like this is clean right Clean, it's clean. I, on you? I know he's not, but I, I got him clippers for Christmas. That was the best gift ever. And then he got me this ring light, which is yes. perfect. So anyway, we'll let you guys go. Happy New Year. We love you. And send us some ideas for our next video. Mwah. That look good again. <laughs> yeah, we do. We just, we're done. All right, Quick peace. Quick finish.